What is going on, everyone? We are here with another uh, interview, ACK Spotlight Series. Y'all know the drill by now. I mean, we're up over 40 episodes at this point, just having a good time talking to artists, don't matter if it's country, rap, pop, R&B. Like, we're just, we're just having a good time. We're just meeting new artists and discovering new music. And today I have Tyler Seabold here. Tyler, what's going on, man? How are you? Oh, it's good, man. How are you? And not too bad. It's a, getting a little cold up here. We've had a couple mm-hmm. of snowstorms. We got one coming tomorrow. So I'm just, I'm, oh, I'm getting ready for the warm weather to come in. It's 10 degrees right now. Yeah, I'm that's a, that's probably about what it is here right now, too. We just had a big, big snowstorm with three feet of snow um, last mm-hmm. week. So not really, not really enjoying the weather right now. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. No, trust me. I'd rather be in the summertime, enjoying the nice mm-hmm. weather, having a couple of fires going and stuff like that. That's that's where it's at for me. Um, kind of before we start the whole interview and I kind of get into my questions, why don't you just let the people know a little bit about just who you are as a person? It doesn't even have to be music wise, just kind of like who you are, where you're at right now and what's going on. All right. My name's Tyler Seabolt. Um, I was born in Wichita. I'm 22 right now. Uh, I've been traveling all around. Uh, lived in Texas for most of my life, San Antonio, uh, spent a year in Montana, absolutely gorgeous. It is gorgeous up there. Came back to Texas after that same place. And now I'm back in Wichita. I play baseball actually in college. I'm a junior um, at Southwestern College, little tiny town in Kansas called Winfield. Yep. Um, love to travel. Uh, East Coast, gorgeous up to boston yep we go to we try to go to boston a few summers it's so pretty up there yeah no it's oh, always man. it's always so much fun up here honestly oh i love it are you a red sox fan yes diehard red sox fan die-hard. yep die-hard. Love, love the red sox um not a patriots fan though a lot of my friends and family no. know that not a bruins fan either so oh i'm sadly a, a cowboys fan oh you're okay i'm a minnesota vikings fan at heart so okay <laughs> That's yeah, me, no, man. but I've just always, so always, always, um, I've been big into sports. My family raised me into sports mm. and stuff like that. So like, I've always been like that and shout out to Wichita because, um, their basketball team, Wichita state, that's my college basketball team. hundred percent. Really? Yep. I back love, when, um, yeah, back when, um, Fred Van Vliet and uh, Ron Baker were there, that's mm-hmm. when I really started getting into it and they were just mm-hmm. lighting it up back in the day. Love Wichita. It's, yeah. a, it's a love hate relationship, Wichita is <laughs> tiny. But it's it's not it's not terrible. No, exactly. Um, so kind of hopping into the first question. Um, everyone knows I always start with the basic of basics, and it just how did you get into music? Like, where did singing and playing the guitar? Where did kind of all that start for you? Yeah, f- funny enough. Uh, I mean, music in general has been in my life forever. My mom used to be a recording singer. She she'd record, and that ended prematurely. But um, she she huge inspiration for me uh singing wise um but no i've been singing you know she sings to the radio constantly so they kind of built a little culture in us to all the kids would would sing along to the radio with her um but i didn't start seriously wanting to do any of this until maybe a year ago writing songs wise and stuff i didn't start writing until about a year ago i didn't even start that tiktok until what late november Really? It just happened to get a few views. So, um, yeah, so uh, it, it mainly started with my mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that I mean, that's awesome. I mean, just because it's so cool. Like, I mean, some people start at such an early age. Yeah. And then some people just start like a year ago, like you did. And I only started writing and producing back in 2018 is when I started going through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people know is when my grandfather passed away. And that's how I wrote my first. ever. Thank you. That's how I wrote my first ever song. Um, and then just, I kind of just kept going from there because like my yeah. mom instilled country music in me. And a lot oh, of people yeah. know that's just what I was born and raised on that, um, nineties, early two thousands type mm-hmm. of country. Um, country. yeah, no, that's all. It's always the best country. And those are a lot of the inspirations that I look up to. And that kind of leads into the second question, which I kind of want to get into is cause I feel like we're probably on the same wavelength when it comes to mm-hmm. this is obviously you have a lot of, um, videos out now on TikTok and stuff. And I was watching a lot of those before I reached out and you have a lot of originals which is just really really cool and we're going to get into kind of your creative process in a little bit Mm -hmm. but when it comes to like writing and playing music and stuff who are some of your inspirations that like you really look up to oh man zach bryan (laughs) zach bryan Uh, zach Zach bryan lyrically 
yeah I, I love him as a singer but you know like lyrically that guy is it's just poem after poem in in a song version i love that guy to death um i love muscadine bloodline oh my god their their music quality is what is what inspires mm-hmm. me but zach bryan is just it's just guy, there's, no, there's nothing else like him and i know that like this is no other word to describe that no it's just zach bryan it's just no him. exactly he came up to um i think it was a couple months ago he just came up to boston and did a show up here um, oh yeah yeah and it was it was real i didn't go but i saw some videos of it and stuff like that um one of my buddies ended up going to it i believe and it was just it was a hell of a time but mm-hmm. it's just that storytelling aspect of country music is oh. what really draws me in and it kind of we kind of got away from that a couple of years ago in the um in the country music business but now it's starting yeah. to slowly come back with like zach Bryan. Oh, some of these red dirt yeah no exactly guys, they're, they're killing the game yeah no yeah, and that's actually, just what I'm it, a huge fan of co Okay. Yep. Cole Wetzel. I yep. love his his often authenticity, where he's just very he doesn't care. He no, just exactly. Wants to play music and right, and that's what it's all about is that storytelling and just that emotional raw aspect because a mm-hmm. lot of people don't have um they just don't have the I mean I don't want to like call anyone out or say anything bad but like a lot of people just don't have the courage to like talk about some of these things and the thing that really hit me was a couple years ago I think I touched up on this in a couple episodes ago is um stick that in your country song by Eric Church he really just started talking about like all these different things like all the um um shootings and stuff going on in Baltimore and Detroit and how teachers are Mm -hmm. underpaid and stuff like that like he was just the first person to ever really kind of stick like just throw that out there and be like all right people need to start talking about this and i think the boldest move that he made even with that i mean that song was bold enough but he released it on a thursday and he said screw this i'm releasing it on a thursday and not on friday like everyone else does like i want everyone to hear this today not tomorrow i absolutely love it and that's just really what it's all about for me is just that emotional letting go and telling that story about no matter what what it is Mm -hmm. um obviously talking about like storytelling and the creative process for writers and stuff like that you have a lot of originals that you post on tiktok and i'm a huge fan of a lot of them and it's just so it's just so different for every artist because some people start with like a melody and some people start with like a verse or like it just it goes in all kinds of places and i always have to quote him before i technically ask the question is garrett walker shout out to him he was on the episode um on one of my episodes is he said it's like a puzzle if you have mm-hmm. 500 to a thousand pieces, like mm-hmm. you have them all scrambled out on the floor, you're trying to put those pieces together and you just don't know how they're going to fit. But then eventually you start fitting these pieces together and you start putting the whole picture together. You start putting the whole story together. And yeah. then by the end, you have this masterpiece, you have this song and right. it's just something that you'll cherish and you can hang up and live with for the rest of your life. So kind of my question is, is what is your creative process like when it comes to writing music? I mean, it, it, it depends. Um, the, the easy days are the ones where you're inspired. Something happens, something, some emotion is, is sparked inside you. Then you can just pick up a guitar, find a, any chord progression, and then it just flows. Um, when it comes to like unmotivated days, that's when like the creative process, get, it gets rough. Um, usually I start, I never start with, a singing melody or any kind of any kind of lyrics or anything like that usually it's always just me playing around on the guitar and then i'll find something usually it's a verse Mm -hmm. usually it's the first verse which is always the best because you can build it it's like just a slow progression but um but yeah sometimes it's a chorus when it when it's i find it really hard whenever i write a chorus and then you have to build a verse that's still good enough to be part of that chorus, but not trumpet. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my creative process. It's really just hope that you're having an emotional day. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want the emotional days. You just kind of have to hope that you have one of those emotional days and then songs just flow. But I, I spend, God, hours and hours writing songs. Yeah. Like, I feel like who said it? Ah, oh, I should have touched off on this. Ed Sheeran, love that guy. Ed Sheeran's Ed Sheeran's songwriting's incredible. I look up to him, not in a 
stylistic standpoint, but in a lyrical and yeah. just the way he makes words jump around. Um, but he said, uh, when it comes to like writing songs, it's like a like a dirty a dirty faucet with a dirty pipeline. Okay, yeah. You gotta let all that nasty water flow, so you just have to write song after song after song, yeah. and then eventually clear water starts to flow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just write. No, that's awesome. And actually, I might have to start using that quote now too. I've been shouting Garrett Walker out. I mean, he was on one of my earlier episodes. I've been shouting that man out for almost at least 20, 25 <laughs> episodes now. But I might have to start using that quote now too because I love that. Love it. And, sure. And yeah, no, that's just, I haven't heard that, but I'm going to have to look that up and kind of just get that all down pat because eventually I'm going to be shouting you out for saying that now too. So oh, awesome. it's, just, it's just always, I always love asking that question just because everyone's creative process is just so unique and different. Like it's, I mean, yeah. for me, I don't really talk about it too much is because I kind of got away from the writing and started producing a little more and started getting into the whole interview series. But like, for me, it's kind of, I can never start with like a melody. Like I just like yeah. it's either the verse or the chorus. And then like you said, like I'm just hoping for one of those days where the emotions are just flowing mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's where a lot of that, that's where a lot of my songwriting comes from. And a lot of people know that from back to when shout out to my brother, Nathan Vasquez for recording that song for me for my mm -hmm. grandfather. But a lot of people just know that that's how mm -hmm. a lot of my music comes about is from emotions and just stuff like that. So it's just always cool to ask that question. Yeah kind of getting into the fourth question it's always the hardest question people freeze up on it people don't it's a hard question and i get it and at the end of the day some people still don't know who they are but some people are starting to develop and realize who they want to be as an artist and like where they want to go um so my question is is with all these other artists out there like trying to make it especially on like tiktok instagram and right. stuff like that at the end of the day what would you say makes you you like what makes you stand out compared to all these other artists out there I, th I think the reason why I love Co so much is the authenticity I feel like I I feel like I'm relatable a lot of people can relate to the songs I write are very they're specific but not specific you know what I mean so like a lot of people can relate to the things I write um I feel like the fan interaction mm -hmm. is, is really good on my part. I love to, I love, especially like, you know, just coming up, it's, it's exciting, you know, exactly. Um, I love to uh, hear what they have to say, any kind of feedback. I love to talk back to them, let them know that like, Hey, I'm not just a guy on the other end of a screen that doesn't see anything you're doing. Like I'm, I'm real. Exactly. You know? But yeah, so it's just the authenticity. I feel like, yeah. No. And that's awesome. That just really shows your artistry um, from what you just said, because I, I think I really connect with a lot of those type of artists because I mean, obviously when you're big time, like some of that stuff kind of, you get pulled away from that stuff yeah. and then people start doing that. But that's what I really connect with is just the people that connect with their audience and mm -hmm. they listen to them and what they want to hear and stuff like that. And right. it's just really cool that that's what you're doing. And that's like, you kind of already have that mindset about that's what you're about. This is who I am and yeah. this is what I'm doing. So it's just really, really cool. <laughs> um kind of getting into like the last little question is like your future is what does your future hold like where um what are your goals as an artist like where do you want to go with your music obviously i know big time is getting up there yeah. probably yeah. that's something but like realistically like in the next like couple of years or something like do you want to put some music out and just like what else can we expect down the road from you yeah man um actually when is it the 28th i'm finally getting in the studio so i'm gonna start Okay. you know promoting some some original stuff um yeah i just just a steady steady growth i just want to keep going on what i'm doing it's a little complicated right now with all of you know school and baseball yeah. trying to balance everything <laughs> but i mean yeah just just steady growth um release as much as i can and hope that the people love it yeah no. And I mean, like I said, I mean, everyone needs to go check out at least his TikTok for sure, because he has so many talented um, songs on there that are just all are, like a lot of originals. I know you do some covers and stuff, too, yeah. but a lot of really cool originals on there that I'm a fan of. And I just can't wait for those to actually get all produced up and get out there on like Spotify, Apple Music and all that fun stuff. So you, I'm man. excited and I'm on the journey with you, man. And I just said uh, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time to do this and always get to the fun part of the um interview is hearing a song by you 
is kind of what I've always been waiting for at the end of each interview. So I'm going to kind of let you take the floor, let the people know what you're singing, kind of what it's about, and the floor is yours, man. All right, so this one is a song I wrote. No, it's not. This one wasn't even inspired by anything. Like, this has this is just a, a fun little song. It's called Not You. It's kind of about a, just about being in a, you know, problematic situation where you, where you want to want the one that you have, but you want someone else. But yeah, it's called Not You. things that I need to say about what's going on inside of my head. I could tell her that I'll change, tell her that I'll stay, but maybe I'll just tell her the same thing. That it's not you, it's me. That's not the truth you see. If I call you in the morning, you don't understand my tone. Understand another woman came along. You know that I never meant to make you cry. It's not you, it's her. No, it's not you, it's her. I told her today. Things I needed to say I thought she would break down in my head She was so calm Said that she'd move on and I knew she was hurting when I said It's not you, it's me And that's the truth, I think If I call you in the morning You don't understand my tone Understand another woman came along. You know that I never meant to make you cry. It's not you, it's her. It's not you, it's her. Awesome job, man. I, I once you started playing that one, I was like, yes, because this is one of that was one of my favorite ones. I like that one. Um, yeah, it's a hard to uncall any time to warm up for that one. That no, exactly. Awesome. No, it's all good. But um, no, that's always an awesome song. And like I said, people, you need to go check him out because he has a lot of really cool originals on his TikTok, um, on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, kind of before I do my little outro here, just what are your, um, cause I don't know them off the top of my head. You probably hopefully know them off the top of your head. Where are all your social handles? Like where can people go find you and stuff like that? Um, my TikTok is Ty Seabolt music. Um, Seabolt S E B O L D T. Same thing with my Instagram and my Twitter. Perfect. Um, again, Tyler, man, I appreciate you so much for coming on, playing a little song, doing this little interview. It just means a lot that artists just take the time out of their day to just do this. Cause it doesn't matter how busy you are and stuff like that. Like, I mean, obviously with you, you got school baseball, trying to sing oh, no, on the no, side no, and I, stuff I really like that. So you're, I, you're, I busy, you're the, probably the busiest one that I've had the interview so far. So I just appreciate <laughs> you taking the time out of your day to do this. No, 100%. Just, I appreciate um, you. Yeah, no, of course. Um, and like I said, I just can't wait for some new music to come out. And I'm a big fan of you and just can't wait to see what else is coming for you. Awesome, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. No, of course. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of concludes another episode of the Spotlight series. Um, that's Tyler Seabolt. Y'all go check him out. Um, big on TikTok right now. So go check out all his covers and originals on there and just stay tuned. Like he said, he's coming out with some new music and you guys know the drill every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you all next week, and thanks for tuning in.